Hey guys, so a couple of days ago, uh, TAR released their own version of the commission addendum and it's a really solid form and a, and a great option. I'm going to go over the, the TAR form and I'm also going to go over the ABOR form as well. Um, these are both good options and we will uh, recommend that you use whichever form you're more comfortable with. This is what TAR looks like. Uh, first, I want to discuss the offer process and whenever you're on the buy side, um, you can assume that the listing agent will be reasonable and we'll talk about when they're not in just a moment. Um, but whenever you are ready to make an offer, you want to call the listing agent first. You're already planning on doing this as part of our submitting impeccable offers process. And the only thing that's changed is that you'll now ask the listing agent uh, which form they prefer. There's no contractual obligation to pay us otherwise, so we have to include this as part of the, part of the contract. Uh, listing agent will have an opinion. They will tell you they either want the uh, TAR form or they want the ABOR form. If other forms come down from track, that'll also become an option at some point in the future, but right now this is what we have. So if the listing agent says, hey, I want the TAR form, no big deal, great. You then ask them, uh, how do you want me to complete it? Uh, do you want, are you, are you guys uh, you know, paying us uh, directly, which is probably not, uh, which could be the case. Um, then uh, you also have seller shall pay and you have either A or B. Um, most of the time initially you're not going to choose B, but you see I've, I've highlighted it right there and I'll talk about that in, in just a moment. But just have a quick conversation with them and uh, ask them how to fill it out. And this form doesn't uh, reference the listing agent's compensation. I do think many listing agents would prefer this form because it continues uh, to uh, not shine a light on their commission. Uh, the ABOR form is also a wonderful option, and if the, list, if the listing agent prefers the ABOR form, then you just fill that out and you say, hey, great, you know, we're going to ask that the buyer, I'm sorry, that the seller pay it, you know, so we're going to put that on our side. Would you like for me to go ahead and fill out yours? But most importantly, when you fill it out, you just fill out the, this side right here. Nine times out of ten, the seller is going to pay us, and so you would complete uh, this top line right here, not the bottom one. This top one, even though I've highlighted, even though I've highlighted both, in the edge case that the buyer is paying us, you would include the form, and uh, you would you would fill this out right there. So again, these are either or. Uh, very important that whenever you do this, you reference this on the one to four family contract or the condo contract must be added here in the list of addenda in order for it to be part of the the contract. So the big question mark is what do we do whenever we have a bad or unreasonable listing agent? And most of the time that is you know, a non-communicative listing agent. If you have somebody unreasonable, you are talking with them and they want you to do something crazy, then the, the best thing to do is to reach out to support. Just ask us, we'll, we'll help you workshop that. You know, um, Most of the time agents are reasonable when they're not or when the seller's not reasonable, that's when we have to start troubleshooting things to help you know, our clients get what's in their best interest. But when they're non-communicative, that's whenever you, you have to do something, right? You're submitting an offer, you're not sure which form you should use. You should already have an opinion on which form you like and put the offer together. You know, you, you've been in a situation before where you've tried to contact a listing agent and they won't re return your calls even though you have a, an offer ready for them. And so you already know how you're going to discuss that with your client. It's just one more step that you have to take. So when you put the offer together, you know, you go here, um, you make sure and reference it in the contract. Again, that's what makes this part of the contract and that's what makes, you know, our buyer side commission, you know, a contingency on the contract. If they want to put the deal together, uh, you know, we have to get paid however we're proposing that we get paid. So assuming that you've checked the TAR form or TXR form, uh, you know, you type that in here and then you'd go over here. And what I recommend you put in is you check D to B. And this is because we don't know if the listing agent has an agreement. So we have to check the box D to B right here. And you just fill that out and you make it part of the contract. If you are more comfortable with the ABOR form, you would select that. You would then put it right here and you would go just fill out this side. Most of the time you're gonna check seller will pay the compensation. You'll check whatever percent. Most of us have 3% agreements. That's great. So you go in here and fill this out. You're leaving this blank on the seller side when you do this. Now what this does, uh, you know, the agent, you're putting together a reasonable offer, I'm assuming, right? The agent then has to deal with this. So they've not, communicated with us, we don't know what they prefer, and when they respond to the offer, that's when we will discover what they prefer. Maybe they don't, maybe, you know, maybe we submitted the 
TXR form, they don't like it, and they want to you know, send it to us in another way. Maybe we submitted the you know, unlock form and ABOR form, and they don't like that. They want it to be the TXR form, and they put it that way. Uh, you know, non-communicative agents are sometimes not super competent, so maybe they send it back to you in some way that is not contractually compliant, at which point we have to troubleshoot that. The good news is that, again, most of the time agents are communicative and reasonable, but we still have this sort of edge case trickiness why we exist. There are unreasonable actors out there and that's how we will have to, to deal with it. This seems like a lot. It can seem confusing. I can tell you guys it will become much smoother over time as market standards emerge, as as you know, agents know what to expect, as we say, well, this is just normal, you know, things will become easier. But we're gonna have a few months where we're working through this and yeah, there's gonna be a bit of disruption. Recommend to all you guys don't worry about it too much. We will work through this. Um, you know, and the, the, the pep talk I'll give is that, you know, we had massive disruption in March of 2020. We didn't even know if we could show houses. And then we discovered, hey, we're, you know, we're considered, you know, critical workers. I can't remember the term they used. And we had to all figure out how to show houses really quickly. And, uh, you know, that big old mess, the market just kind of worked itself out. This is much more organized. And I do expect that the market standards will emerge much more quickly. As always, reach out to us with any concerns, reach out to us with any questions, edge cases, things like that. And, you know, looking forward to working through this with you guys and coming out on top. Thanks, y'all.